Okay, hello! Alright, today we have a new game we're going to be starting here. This is another visual novel, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, this is called Love at First Sight. Now, I don't know too much about this game. I do know it's about a single die girl, so it's like a cyclops or something, but the description on this game on Steam just says for about the game is pretty short, so I'll just read it. After falling in love at first sight with the shy Shachi Usui, an injury-ridden, single-eyed high school girl, the protagonist tries to win her over her lonely and isolated heart. A pure, heartwarming romance game where the apple of your eye has only has one eye. Alright, so I'm thinking we're going to uh, um, be looking at some sort of romance game again. I mean, the last one we just that I just finished was romance game. And it looks like this one might be as well. This one is developed by a company called Creepy Cute. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was published by uh, uh, Sakai Project. So, which I uh, I have some issues with Sakai Project. Some of their decisions that they they make on game wise, but that's for a different that's for a discussion I can make on my main channel that has nothing to do with here. This is we're here to play some games, man. We're here to play games, not argue about the state of video games and companies' decisions. All right, let's get this going here. All right, let's start this up. Now, as far as I can tell, this is it's going to be kind of uh, black bars on the side of this video because the resolution the resolution isn't the best. So uh, we'll start it up. All right, let's start a new game here. Ooh, an eyeball. Act one, catch my eyes. I do like the background, it's kind of like a painted background. I do like that. It's early in the morning. This is the path I always take to get to school. I normally have to hurry, but today I'm taking it easy. I had a little extra time to get out of the house, which is kind of unusual. I'm feeling good under the warm morning sun and cool morning breeze as I head to school. So it, lo it looks like it's fall, so it's about it must be fall. I mean, the, the trees look like it's fall, and it sounds like it's uh, might be fall time. That's what the setting seems. All right, here it doesn't really. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not in a hurry, but it still doesn't take long to get to school. My house isn't right next door, right next to the school, but it isn't that far away either. Even if I don't leave as early as I did today, I never have to run, run to get to school on time or anything. That's what I'm thinking as I change into my school slippers. Uh, so this is more of a modern setting when they talk about the slippers. I've seen those before. It, they got those like rubber. It's like it's basically like rubber looking, and like. It's like blue or red, and I, I think it might have to be like one is boys and one's girl. I don't really know the whole concept the whole th of, of it all, but I always found it interesting. Different, different, you know, different. I think that's me because, you know, it seems to be something in Japanese. But my, my question that I've always been curious about is, is that all Japanese schools or, or is that mainly just public Japanese school? I'm assuming Japanese has public schools and private as well. And private schools have their own rule settings, and this is more, of, or maybe it's just school settings in general. All I mean, I'm assuming that maybe some don't, because unless it's a universal thing. <laughs> questions, questions. <laughs> I would have to ask someone who's actually gone to school and, know, and who actually lives in Japan and knows Japanese the way the Japanese do things. It'd be an interesting conversation. I would have plenty of things to ask them. I find Japanese culture and Japan in general interesting. I absentmindedly climb the stairs, heading to my classroom on the second floor. Class 2 2. I put my hand on the door to open it. And then. Oh, Makun. Good morning. You're here earlier than usual. How unlike you. She's kind of cute. I, I don't mind the art there. It's kind of nice. It's more of like a, it seems like a painted look to it. It's just, I don't, that's what it seems like to me. It's not like a regular drawn look. Her loud, ear-splitting voice sh shakes me out of my morning days. 
Good morning. Alright, I'm trying not to butcher her name. Akeme? I'm trying to think, you know, I have never actually been the best at pronouncing it. Akeme. <laughs> Akeme. I'm assuming it might be how it's pronounced. I could be mistaken. I see you're getting a head start on being loud and obnoxious today. Why is she blinked like one eye blinked? She, she has her one eye closed. Is she the Cyclops girl? But she doesn't have one big eye. She's just like one's closed. Unless she like becomes one eye at one point or something. There's nothing wrong with being energetic. This overly spirited person is... Tsuneme Akeme. I, I'm probably butchering the name. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the Japanese people out there. Or anyone who knows better pronunciation than me. I am not fluent. And I never really t use, use it actually spoken wise. So She's always like this. The kind of person who's always going full throttle from the moment she wakes up until the moment she falls asleep. You're not energetic. You're out of control. But I guess that's what I should be expecting by now. Morning, Tomo. You know her better than I do, right? Does she have a volume knob? <laughs> volume knob. Why? All right, all right. So she she was just putting doing those one of those things with her eyes. I've never actually seen someone realistically in real life talk with like with one eye like kind of like a blink, like not a blink but a wink like that. Really too much. You see it in anime and stuff all the time, but real life I've never actually seen seen people really do that. Morning. I've known Akame for a long time, and I can say for sure that no, she doesn't. This is Ochiai Tomoyori. He's a zombie in contrast to Akame, Akame's liveliness. I like saying Akame's. Akame. I think I'll, I'll say that as her name. Akame. Akame. Hmm. Yeah. But like Akame, his energy levels consist constant. His lifeless, he's lifeless all day, every day. Man, I am... Yeah. I've only known her for a little while, but I'm starting to realize that. You'll get used to it. Ma-kun, lately you've started treating me as bad as Tomo-kun. Uh-oh, she looked pissed. Is this really how you should be treating someone you've only known for two months? Considering how annoying you are, do you really expect me to treat you any differently? Yeah, I've only known these two for about two months, though I've gotten pretty close to them in that time. I'm Fukunage Mamoru. Mamoru. Two months ago, I had to switch high schools because of my parents' work. Falls almost over. I transferred to the middle of the season, and because of that, I was a bit of an identity ad among the other students. I was really uh, nervous at first, but luckily these two came along and we became friends. Is it just uncommon in Japan? I've seen this 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 uh, trend before uh, in like animes and other things where it seems like it's like odd or something for like people to transfer like mid-season. Uh, is it really that odd? Is it? I mean, I, I just don't understand it, but it, to me it's like, okay, they just transferred in. I mean, it, why is it odd to transfer mid-season? In the middle of a, the middle of a uh, semester or whatever they call it in Japan. Is, is it just weird? And why is it weird? I just, it's just, it's just something I've noticed in some animes that I've seen. It's like the dude who transfers in in the middle or you, it just seems weird. Like some people, like some of them take it as a weird like odd like why would you do that type of thing yeah. to me it's just odd that you even think that's odd <laughs> did i read this all right i think i might have read it all that's me tomokun say something well it seems like you two are getting close 
He does seem like a zombie. Just look at him. Look at his face. He's like, a uh, Kind of like spaced out like... Yeah. Thanks to you. Hey, don't ignore me. I can say for sure that Tomo is the real reason I'm comfortable here now. He doesn't take care of his appearance, and he's not the warmest person you'll ever meet. But he's pretty smart and ultimately a good guy. I learned how dependable he is pretty quickly. Okay, ignoring me is now forbidden, you hear me? Oh my, why is it forbidden? Are you like an attention hog? Are you an attention hog, Akemi? We might be ignoring her, but I guess I owe Akemi as well. The fact that she's so annoyingly loud is her only real flaw. I don't know anyone more aspiring than her. Lately, Akemi's been trying to get me to hang out with her and Tomo all the time. The two, the two seem to balance each other out, though it's not a perfect balance by any means. From what I hear, they've been friends since they were kids though, Tomo once told me. She's basically just been following me around this whole time. The bell rings. It's already time for homeroom. What's first period today? Math, our homework is due today. You did do it, right? Yeah, yesterday. I finished with time to spare for a change. I was actually able to go to bed early because of that. I said ignoring me was forbidden. Hey! The morning lessons in, and lunchtime begins. Lunchtime! Time to eat. She likes to wink a lot. We move from our classroom to one further down the hall. We're the only ones in here, and Akemi's thundering voice echoes in the empty classroom. The three of us have been coming to this empty classroom for lunch since I transferred to the school. On the menu today? For today is Salisbury steak. Awesome! Hmm, Salisbury steak's okay, I guess. I wouldn't be as ex excited as you, but alright. What are you, a kid? Come on, can you at least lower the volume during lunch? Tomo, help me out here. After a moment, Tomo replies. What do you want me to do? Then he sighs and snatches a chemist's chopsticks from her. <laughs> hey! Then, as Akemi opens her mouth to protest, Tomo stuffs a piece of Salisbury steak into her mouth. <laughs> she seems to have forgotten anything she wanted to say when the food entered her mouth, and she quietly chews it. I guess that's a way to shut her up. <laughs> Take this! Her mood improves a moment later, and her expression dissolves into bliss as she chews. She really is an airhead. I'm not her keeper, you know. Could have fooled me. Who else could hold back that freight train of a girl? You think I can hold back a freight train? Okay, maybe not. Exactly! Akima cries, spewing food everywhere. Then, realizing what she just did, she hastily closes her mouth and swallows. <laughs> She definitely seems like an energetic girl. I'm the number one most cheerfulest girl in town. Tsuneme Kamechan. You do seem quite cheerful. I will give you that. You're an energetic and very you seem very cheerful. And with that, she goes back to eating her lunch. I guess she can't stay quiet for long, no matter what she's doing. The most cheerfulest girl in town? I don't think you have any competition for that title. No kidding. She's one of our school's celebrities. Really. Those things never really made sense. The, the like, you hear, like, the student who's, like, kind of like this. To me, it's just like, okay, so they're kind of like, the preppy students, or whatever you want to call them. The jocks, and uh, whatever 
you want to call it when it comes to the guy and other things like okay I guess that's what you would consider it close to or some sort of stuff the popular kids Tomo starts on his own lunch seriously one of you mean there's more yeah our school has a lot of unusual students there's a lot of rumors floating around concerning our school, it seems. Wow. What other kinds of celebrities are there? Maybe the, maybe it's a weird translation, celebrities. Maybe it just means... I, I guess a celebrity just sounds weird. In my opinion. You don't know about any of them. Well, first there's... Tomo takes a quick glance at Kame. But she seems to be lost in her own food-induced paradise. She's not even listening to us anymore. Well, there's a lot of them. If you really want to know, I'll tell you later. Doesn't want to talk about this in front of Akame. I guess it's a touchy subject, but I'll make it a point to ask about it later. Hmm, I wonder why it's a weird touchy subject. Hmm. All done! You ate way too fast. Crap. I barely touched any of my own food while we were chatting. I should have started on my lunch while she w had her mouth closed. I'm not going to get another chance now. Well, you could choose not to reply to her. Just let her talk. And just eat your food. Hey! What were you two talking about? I was recounting the epic saga of how you won your fame. He seemed to be really interested in it, so I wanted him to hear it from the source. Wait, what? Really? Sure thing, Makun. Do you want to hear about when I saved the town for the first time with my fantastic powers? I hadn't met Tomokun yet, and... Okay. Fantastic powers? What kind of fantastic powers you got? Come on, tell, tell us. No, no. I really wanted to hear about that. Come on, Tomo. A minute ago, you told me to take care of her, and now I'm telling you to do it. I haven't even touched my food yet, so you be her friend for a bit. And without a second glance, he starts eating his lunch in silence. Makun, are you listening? So, anyway, my mom had gone out shopping and... Oh my, she, she's going to talk. She's probably going to talk like freaking crazy. <laughs> no. You are the one who needs to listen. Man, how did I get roped into this? And so for the rest of lunchtime, I got stuck listening to her story while I finished my lunch and gave her the occasional nod. Well, that's what you, yeah, that's what I was thinking he should do, you know, like eat and then like listen to her. And just like, nod. <laughs> School ends. Huh, Makun, where's Tomokun? Kimmy calls out to me as I'm packing my stuff up my stuff. She was rushed out of the classroom right when class ended, and it seems she came back just as quickly. He said he had something to take care of at, back at his place and left a little early. What's up? Oh, really? Um, well, can you take this to the third year classrooms for me? I promise to return this before the end of the day, but I got a club meeting. I gotta go to... So... She hands me a small paper bag. It feels like it's got a book or something inside it. I sigh. Fine. I'll do it. Thanks a bunch! Give it to a student in class 3-2 named Yae Katashi. I'm counting on you. No sooner does she say that than she disappears once again. She just can't sit still, can she? I suppose I better get going too. No telling how long this Yae person is going to be there for. For? I finish packing up and head to the classroom on the third floor. I arrive at the third year student's classroom with the Kame's package and look for the person I'm supposed to deliver it to. But for some of the other students tell me, she stepped out for a bit. They say she'll be back soon and that I can just wait here for her. But, whoa, I already, sorry about that, I actually skipped ahead. 
Maybe I should have one of the other people here give it to her and just go home. School's over. Most of the students have been at their club activities for a while now. While I'm waiting in the third year classroom, the other students file out, and the school grounds slowly become devoid of life. The noise of daytime activities have all but disappeared. I feel like I'm in, in detention. I want to go home already. Giving up, I leave the classroom and turn toward the stairwell. My classroom is on the second floor, so I usually don't spend any time up here. The layouts of the two floors are pretty much identical, but somehow I feel like this is some alternate dimension. And just as I'm about to descend the stairs, I start to hear what I think are sobs coming from nearby. Oh no. Oh, who could it be? Who's crying? I figured I was alone and had relaxed because of that, but a sudden sobbing catch me off guard, and I froze and freeze. I held my breath and strained my ears. It's not my imagination. Someone nearby is crying softly. Hearing someone cry in an empty school building sounds like the beginning of a horror story. What am I saying? This isn't a horror story. School might be over, but the sun hasn't even gone down yet. Finding some else, I think it's some else, someone else, I, I think it's supposed to say someone. Finding someone else in the building isn't that strange. Well, I say that, but this situation isn't exactly normal either. The sobbing continues. It sounds like it's coming from the next floor up. Well, there's a fourth floor? It's quiet, but it reverberates off the narrow stairwells. Walls. It definitely coming from the floor above me, though I didn't realize it until now. This building only has three floors. The only thing above me is the roof, right? Oh, so, so they're on the roof. Okay, so someone's on the roof crying. Well, gonna go up there? He probably is. School is over. The door to the roof should be locked by now. But I can still hear the crying, so there's no way it could be coming from here. Oh, so it, you think it might be, but it's not? But if the door is locked... That means the way up is just a dead end. I can't just walk up there to check and claim I happened to walk by. Well, <clears throat> you could walk over there and if they're there, you could ask what the problem is. I mean, you don't have to just be... You, that you just happened to walk by, you were just curious. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If someone's crying and you hear it, that's why you're walking over there. You're curious, just tell them. You're like, are you okay? You don't have to come up with a lame excuse like that. I'm just walking by. Sorry. But before I can think it through, my curiosity has me turning around and heading back up the stairs. I climb step by step up the stairs as quietly as I can, though I can't help but make a little noise. Are you trying to sneak up there? Or something? As I get closer to the source of the sobbing, I begin to hear it more clearly. There's just one voice, and judging by the sound of it, it's a girl's. It feels like I'm climbing up ten stories, but it only takes a few seconds and suddenly I'm almost on the landing. I take the last step and turn toward the source of the crying. In front of me is a girl wearing our school's uniform. She's lying against the door to the roof, sobbing. Though it's not on the roof, she's just at the top. The girl hears me walking toward her and starts shivering as she turns her head towards me. Oh, is she scared? Nothing up to this point has been too out of the ordinary. At least until I saw her face. It's the Cyclops girl. I, I, you know, when I saw pictures of this, I always wondered why does she have all the bandages on her for? It wasn't the Cyclops' eye that really got me wondering why what, anything. It's like, why does she have bandages all over her? I mean, we'll, we'll probably get maybe no explanation about the eye. Maybe we will. I don't know. But the bandages is what I'm curious about. Why does she have bandages for? The 
girl stares at me with her single eye. Her face sopping wet from crying. And I don't mean that she was missing an eye. She literally had one giant eye in the middle of her face. You're right on that being a giant eye. I mean, that's freaking huge. <laughs> Suddenly, she registers that I'm standing in front of her. And she jumps, drawing her lips into her body. A bit of light reflects off the unwiped tears near her wide open eye. I can tell by the way she's looking at me that she's terrified. And why is she scared? She's not the only one though. Without really understanding what I'm looking at, I stare at her, her unmoving, and she does the same. She's wearing our school's uniform, but is she really a student here? Man, her, her clothes are all tattered up too and ripped. What the hell? Looks like she just got out of like some sort of freaking fight or something. I'm not gonna lie, if I saw someone with one eye, I probably couldn't help but stare. I mean, I wouldn't mean to... I don't want to be mean about it, it's just I've never seen someone with one eye. I, it's, I'm not trying to be, you know, hurtful or anything, I would be like. I'm just curious. Why do you have one eye? I mean... I'm not saying you can't have one eye. Okay, okay? <laughs> They're just sitting in silence, staring at each other. <laughs> no matter how many times I blink, his second eye doesn't suddenly grow on her face, and I finally realize that what I'm seeing is reality. I'm seeing a cyclops. Faced with this girl, who looks like she belongs in a fairy tale, I begin to panic. Strangely, though, I'm able to keep my freight from showing. The situation is so unreal. I guess my brain really... My brain just refuses to fully acknowledge it. Um... I heard crying and came to see what was going on. Are... You alright? Yeah, that's what I was thinking you should just say. You know, when you got there, if someone was crying and you saw them, you basically just ask. You heard, you came here because you heard crying and you were just wondering if they're alright. The longer the silence drags on, the harder it becomes to break it. I try to come up with something. Anything to say to force myself out of this stupor. But my mind is completely blank, and at this point, anything is better than silence. Um. It seems her mind is just as blank as mine. I work my mouth soundlessly as a few times before finally spewing out the first thing that came to my mind. Do you need something to wipe your face? Her uniform is black, so I can tell it if it's wet from her crying into it. She doesn't have a handkerchief or anything, though. I produce my own handkerchief from my pocket and move to offer it to her. I approach the girl sitting at the top of the stairs to give her the handkerchief, and once again she starts shivering in fear. Why is she so scared? I mean, does it have to do with anything we're seeing? Like, all the bandages or something? Maybe she doesn't like people. She's looking at me like some kind of monster. Am I really that scary? Isn't she the monster here? Well, that's kind of mean, thinking of her as the monster. I mean, just because you can't explain why she only has one eye or anything, you don't just call someone who looks different, who might have a medical condition? Maybe. I don't know if such a thing actually exists, but maybe it does. A monster? <laughs> that is... that's quite mean. Silence. Oh, whoa. Looks like she's getting a little... staring at you a little there. Thank you. I hold the handkerchief out stiffly for several seconds, then cautiously. Oh, so cautiously, she takes the handkerchief and wipes her face. Those are the first words she's spoken so far, but her trembling voice is so quiet that I almost don't hear her. Er, I only transferred to the school about two months ago. I don't think I've seen you around. This is definitely the first time we've met, of course. I'm sure that if I had seen her before, her face would have been burned into my mind. 
There's no way I could forget what I'm seeing now. I think that would be true for most people. I mean, you don't see very many Cyclops around. Should I ask her to give my, give my handkerchief back? It's obvious from the way she's looking at me that she's still confused and afraid. We're not going to get anywhere at this rate. We must be in different classes since I haven't seen you around before. What grading class are you in? I'm in class 2 too. Class 1 2. She actually gave me a proper response this time. She really is a student here. I guess not a monster or something. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm still curious about why her clothes is all tattered up and everything. And why does she have bandages all over the place? Suddenly, it hit me that I have been sharing the same school and hell, the same world, with this person all this time. Oh, one year lower then. Yeah. The conversation grinds to a halt again. I can't think of anything else to say. Actually, that's not true. I have a mountain of things I want to ask her. Yeah, I, I, even I have many questions. Why is your clothes all tattered up? Why were you crying? Of course, she never told you why. Why do you have one eye? Some of those questions might have to wait. Maybe if you get to actually get to know her where she opens up a little. Because the one eye things, probably. Unless she gives you the answer, because, you know... If you have one eye, it would kind of be obvious that someone was going to question why you have one eye. <laughs> and you've probably been asked that many times. But all of it has to do with her appearance. And that's what I was thinking too. Most of my questions would have to be with your appearance as well. And I'm hesitant to bring that up. It makes sense. You don't want to hurt her feelings or scare her away. You seem like a nice guy. You don't want to be mean. Even though you're not trying to. Time passes as I hurriedly try to think of something to say to fill the silence. What can I say? My mind is totally blank. Every heartbeat seems louder than the last. And the panic I thought had to subside wells up inside my mind again. I don't think I can keep this up. Right. I have to get going. Ah! Girl looks like she wants to say something. But without another word, I turn and flee down the stairs. I head to the shoe rack, change my shoes, and start rushing home. Walk on for a few more seconds after clearing the campus gates, then I pause for a moment and take a deep breath. Jeez. Seems that girl didn't follow me or even call after me. Maybe you'll meet, maybe you'll meet her again the night tomorrow. She's probably still sitting at the top of the steps in that desolate stairway. I guess he kind of whimpered out instead of sitting there and trying to uh, ask her anything else. I guess he was too afraid. Or too shy. Or a mixture. I would say a mixture of feelings he probably had. He didn't know what to say. He didn't want to probably hurt her feelings by asking some the wrong questions. Because she's already crying. Don't want to say the wrong thing and make her cry some more. Among his own feelings. Maybe he was a little shy there. He didn't... I don't know. We really haven't gotten to know him that much either. We don't know his personality too much. He does seem like a nice dude. A cold wind is blowing as I walk home. And I gradually regain my composure. My heart is still racing though. I think I'm going to feel uneasy about what just happened for a long time. I was really surprised. Maybe I still don't fully understand what I saw. I have to think about it some more. Was it fear? Was I afraid of her? I don't know. I don't think you were... I don't know if you were afraid. For some reason, I don't think you were afraid. You just... You just didn't know what to say. It was... 
kind of speechless in a way. Unless she really were afraid. I don't know why she would be that scary. She didn't seem that scary to me. Different. I don't know about scary. Just different. No, there's nothing so scary about some girl. That's right, and yeah, she wasn't that scary. Even if she is. Honestly, I can't shake the thought that she might be some kind of monster. But she must be a human high school student, right? I think she is, yeah. Just different. I was definitely scared out of my wits at first. But I think if I, she wanted to hurt me, she would have done it. In fact, she's beyond harmless. She's as timid as a mouse. But if that's the case, why do I still feel uneasy? Is my mind just unable to accept that she has only one eye? No, that's not it. It's not like I was avoiding staring at her or anything. Actually, I don't think I could have looked away even if I wanted to. Whatever. It's not worth dwelling on. The fact that I'm not disgusted by her after all this means it was just pure surprise, right? You're probably right there. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable conclusion. At any rate, I think it's safe to say anyone who saw her face wouldn't forget it anytime soon. I think you're right on that as well. Yes, I'm thinking this over. I finally arrive at the familiar entryway to my house. I was so absorbed in my thoughts. I guess I was on autopilot all the way home. That's not always good. Especially when you have to, if you cross streets, that's kind of dangerous going on autopilot. You gotta know sometimes on what's going around in your environment. The accidents happen if you don't know what the hell you going on around you. I'm home. Oh, welcome home. You're a little late, aren't you? What were you doing? Akime roped me into being her errand boy. She wanted me to deliver something for her. Ha. Huh. Later that night, I let a deep sigh as I'm lying in my futon, unable to sleep. For some reason, I couldn't tell my mom about the one-eyed girl. It wasn't like it was a traumatic event or anything, but I almost feel guilty. At any rate, I can't stinkin' I can't stop thinking about her face. I know that if I don't fall asleep soon, I'm gonna have to rush to school tomorrow. I try to forget about everything that happened today, but I just can't keep my eyes closed. She looked like she wanted to say something back there, but I panicked and ran away. I kind of regret not staying now. I rolled over in my futon several times, but eventually I come to a decision. I'm going to try and find that girl again. That's what I was thinking. I mean, if you were curious on why she was crying or you wanted to meet her again, I mean, you guys go to the same school. You could look into trying to find her again if anyone knows who she is. I mean, it might be hard to ask the question at first if anyone believes you that there's one-eyed girl in the school, but I think anyone who knows that there's one-eyed girl is not going to forget there's one-eyed girl. <laughs> and you can ask, do you know where the one-eyed girl is? <laughs> you don't know her, Since you don't know her name, you can't actually ask her name. I feel like I should at least learn her name. That's right. Then you don't have to, like, think of her as the one-eyed girl. You can just, she'll actually have a name. Okay. Well, that was, looks like it's the completion of the first day. Oh, no. Alright, that, that looks like that was the end of Act 1. Oh, okay, okay. So let's... All right, I think we're gonna end it here. I don't know how many acts are in here, but how about we end this off here? So we uh, we finished day one and everything. We're act one, which is basically day one. It was the first day. So we met her, the one I girl. We don't know her name yet. Maybe we'll find out her name. And we'll see this this uh, what happens between them. I mean, from what I can tell, this is going to be some sort of romance type of story. So we'll see what type of relationship builds between this cyclops girl that we don't know her name yet and our main protagonist 
Alright guys, so I want to thank you for uh, watching this video. And if you want to, feel free to leave a comment. I don't... And then if you if you like the video or not, thumbs up, thumbs down, of course. And if you want to see more videos of uh, more visual novels as well as other games, uh, feel free to uh, subscribe. And in the description box, I'll also have a link to my blog as well as a link to my other YouTube channel. Again, I want to thank you guys for uh, watching this and uh, you all have a great day.